okay so hello and welcome to the channel and in today's video i'll be explaining the concept of kin architecture in flutter so as developers our goal shouldn't be just writing codes that work but codes that are maintainable scalable and testable as well so that's when the idea of architecture comes to the scene and in today's video we'll be looking at an overview of kin architecture um, implemented using flutter so if you've come across the concept of clean architecture before then i'm sure you've seen um, this diagram here right uh, where we have um, this um, circles right um, and if you have also not seen this diagram before um, don't worry because i'll be explaining it in today's video so let's get right into the video and start implementing clean architecture okay so i have two diagrams here and these two diagrams are um, similar right so they are all trying to describe the same concept and um, this much like a detailed view and this is just how um the different layers of these um, views interact with each other right so we have um how do you call use cases which you can also find here and the entities as well right so let's look at the second diagram that's this one right and try to um, identify what is going on right so realize we have um, three main sections and that's in this case we call it layers um, we have our presentation layer our domain and then our data layer as well and i'll be explaining this um layers so let's start with the presentation um the presentation layer will contain your widget and then your presentation logic holders right so this layer is very common if you haven't um, even used any architecture in your app you've just written any flutter code before then what you did was um you wrote the codes in the presentation layer right so um the non-architecture part of flutter that's anything you write you have some pages widgets and then you have some maybe block chain notifier river port provide any state management tool that you are using um just that layer right is the presentation layer now um the domain layer right um is the layer which um should contain your core business logic also known as use cases right so previously if you are writing codes without architecture you are writing all your logics and um, everything you want to do in your controllers or your block your chain notifier whatsoever we're just packing everything into the presentation layer but then in clean architecture we have um layers for everything right so the layers about your logic which is those that you are writing in the presentation layer will now come to the domain layer and don't worry if it sounds a little bit confusing i'll show you how it's been done in code right now within the domain layer we have use cases which are just like a wrapper for the actual logic and then our entities are just objects so like you have um, a user entity which is a class um, that has um, id a username um, all those um, data types you may have in your class right yeah so those are the entities and we also have repositories in our domain and we can realize um our repository is kind of a gradient which means it sits in between the domain and then the data layer right so we have um domains we have repository in the domain and we also have repository in the data layer and then they will do similar things right so they will have some kind of relationship which we will later see in the code now the data layer is anything related to data right so you have some kind of local data firebase um it doesn't matter database you are using whether you are using hive or even just json database or whatever right it doesn't really matter so this is where you'll be communicating with remote data sources that's if it is firebase local data sources that's whichever local database you are using mysql or whatsoever and those um data that you'll be having will be passed to our repositories 
and our repositories will pass them to the use cases use cases will pass them to um, presentation and then the presentation does uh, logic holders will pass it to the widget right so this is how the call flow um, works so for instance if you have a button that performs a particular task like reading data from firebase firestore right that button will be um in the presentation which is will be part of your widgets or your pages then um on the on press of that button right um you will call some method in your controller right now that method in your controller won't do much won't um call firebase directly that um, method or function will call um a use case right which contains the actual logic of um, calling firebase but then this use case also won't have the full logic for uh, firebase because firebase does not um does not appear in the domain layer right it's not part of the domain layer it's something related to data so this use case will be like okay um let me look for the data layer and then call firebase right so this use cases will also call the repository which will in turn call the firebase which is um, located in your data layer so um, let's see how this is actually done in code right so i have some projects here which is um i'm using clean architecture right and in this project i have my features right so um the features are let's say what's your apps is about right so you are going to divide your apps into features and then each feature will have this layer i showed you right so let's look at something like let's say um the community feature right now in the community feature i have my data domain and then presentation just like i showed um, in the diagram so if i bring the diagram up again right um for every feature you are going to have a presentation domain and then data and it's not compulsory to always have domain and data right maybe the, that feature doesn't require any function it just um a stateless ui so with that one you wouldn't need um, domain and data but that's how a feature should look like so when we look at the community feature we have um data domain and then the presentation now let's look at the presentation which is the normal things um, we do with uh, Mario or Flutter. So, in the presentation, I'm having my widgets, right? I'm having my pages, which is the normal page. This has nothing special. It's just how you build your UI, right? So, these are just normal rows and column. And then I have my controllers. So, my controller is um, the presentation logic holder. And in Clean Architecture, we don't care about which. Um, state management to use so any state management tool at all can work you don't really do much in your state management tools right so you can use riverport provider getx whatsoever and in this um, project i'm using getx because of that i have my um, bindings and um, folder as well which contains my bindings for dependency injection right which is not composed if you are not using getx this is not actually part of clean architecture now um within my um, domain so let's close the presentation and within the domain we have entities repositories and use cases right so just as in the diagram we have use cases entities and repositories now within the entities we have a community entity which is just a class so if i scroll up right which is just a class which extends equitable and equitable is not um something related to clean architecture it's not composed just for um comparing values right comparing data in your classes so this entity is just the normal class you know the normal class you create for um objects in flutter right so yeah so that's about the entities and then in um how do you call it so in the community we have the repository and this repository define your contract right so whatever you want to do 
I want to create a community, I want to find a community, I want to delete a community, but I don't um, write the full functionality here. Right, so you realize we have um, the repositories, we have um, the get this gradient. So the one in the domain, which is the rest section of the repository, will define um, contracts. So contracts are like, what are your intents? What do you want to do for that particular future? Right? Yeah, so these are my contracts. And then the one in the data will actually implement these contracts. Right? So when we go to our data, uh, the data section of this, which is the community um, under the repository section of our data, realize that we are implementing so community repository implementation is implementing the community repository and then it is actually um, creating the community finding a community and all those kind of stuff but for instance let's say if you want to find a community um, how we find a community will depend on our data which is um, our data source right so in order to find a community we need database that's where we store the community at so that work of finding the community will now be given to the database to work which means they are all independent right because finding a community is not actually the work of a repository um in how do you call it the data layer but it's rather the data source right so when we come to the database section so a database section, i have my community with more database and this is where i'm actually finding the community Right, so I'm calling Firebase collection communities, blah blah blah, and then I'm returning that community. Right, so this community will be retained here, and then we will return um this community to um how do you call it? Whatever um class or whatever method we use this fine community, right? So with the help of the DART package, we have our either failure and then the community which is a way of handling errors in that if you are using the that package all right so we are returning the community and if there is any error we are returning just a failure so that's how the data from um, the repository section work now the use cases will call this repository so you see this fine community um function over here won't be called directly in our controller or in our block our river pod whatever state management tool we are using it rather be called from a use case right so the use case will call the repository and then it will return the results to our controller so let's look at how it's being called so for instance find community when we come to the use case we have um find community use case and within this find community use case we are calling um so you see we have a community repository here and then we are calling that repository of find community and we are passing some values right so which in this case is strength i created a, um, a special class for these kind of values we don't have to but i'm passing that string right and this is just um a signature for a use case so i want all my use cases to be consistent that's why i created a class for this use case so it's just an abstract class and then it has either a failure or the particular type i pass in and it has a method call and it takes in some prompts right so that's just a signature for all my use cases and when you when you start implementing um, clean architecture you get to understand it so that's the call flow now how do we find this um community right so if you look for where we are finding the community so find community use case right so realize that we are using it i'm using it in the um discover controller so if i search for discover controller yeah so i'm finding the community so this is where i'm actually calling the find community use case from my controller right and then um i'm returning as i said it's either going to be results in a failure or a success right which is a community because if you are finding a community see that we will fail or we we'll get some community and then when we get our community we are doing some extra stuff which are not related to clean architecture just how my app works right so that's the general core flow you may have some widgets so for now um this i have a widget in my discover page 
um, that's a button um, this elevated button right and then I'm calling the controller dot find and this controller dot find which is just a wrapper around you don't want to find a community of or find a group that's based on how my app works there's not um, clean architecture per se right so let's assume in my um, my page i'm just calling find community and i'm passing some code right because um a find community expects some strength right so this find community will then call so in my widget i press on the button then in the controller i'm calling a use case right so this use case which is the find community use case will then call the repositories right then so when we come to a find community use case, we realize um, we are calling a repository, right? Which is the community repository. Then this community repository, which is an abstract class, but it's been implemented elsewhere. So community repository implementation. This community repository, find community, will then um, also call our data source. That's a real data source, local data source right so we realize we are calling our remote um, data source dot find community and we are passing that community id so just a chain of call flow right and if you understand this you'll be able to uh, manage complexity when it comes to big apps in flutter and if this also seems a little bit confusing don't worry i'm working on a full tutorial from scratch um, about clean architecture right so that's the general overview of clean architecture you may have a button right in your um in your page which performs some operation but you are not going to put all the logic in your controller or block right you are going to separate them into domain data and then um, any other section you have to separate it right so this is the general overview of how the clean architecture works in flutter and if you want to see um the full tutorial on how we build a, um, an app with clean architecture then please consider subscribing liking and then sharing this video as well so i'll see you in that video